Today we're doing a publicity shoot with recording artist Pia Toscano. So I'm going to start by using a cream eyeshadow base just because it actually gives the eyeshadow something to stick to and actually makes it last a lot longer. So basically with the cream eyeshadow we're just pressing it into the mobile lid. The mobile lid is everything below the socket line to the lash line. So we're just going to set that cream eyeshadow with a powder. I'm choosing obviously a colour that's very similar to the cream shadow that I used previously because I don't want to change the tone of that. I'm just going to continue a little bit of that bronze underneath the eye. You can look up for me for a second. Just to give us a little bit of definition and add to the glow. I'm taking it right into the corner of the eye. Now I'm keeping in with the tones of all the browns and the chocolate colours. This is much more of a deeper brown. I'm not quite going to go to the usual black for the liner. So I'm just using a powder on a tight, small, shorter brush close to me. And I'm just brushing that right into the lash line. By using this dark chocolate colour, you can create all the definition and the pop in the eye without it looking like you have a harsh black liner. And then with a small blending brush, I'm just going to blend the edge of that line into the shadow. And then look up for me. I'm going to take the same colour of that chocolate into the bottom lash line as well. So this is basically the eye. Obviously it was very simple and we did very little work to achieve this. If you want to create a little extra strength in the definition of the liner, um, a little trick is to just wet uh, your eyeliner brush and use the same powder eyeshadow that you were using, but use it wet. And that'll just give you a little bit of a stronger definition in that liner without it still turning into like a harsh liquid line. And as this is still just a powder eyeshadow that just happens to be wet, if you like when it does dry, you can still blend it into the, to the other shadow as well. So now that I've actually completed the eyes, I'm going to go in with my concealer palette and just make sure that there are no imperfections anywhere. I choose personally to what do the base first, then the eyes but I don't powder or set the base at all. I actually come back to that um, afterwards in case there's any fallout or anything that happens while you're doing the eyes in case you decide that you want to, you know, remove the eye and start again. If there's any decisions that get made throughout that process, you don't have to redo the whole base. So I'm just doing a little bit of extra concealing. Then I'm going in with a light translucent powder. This one actually has a tiny little bit of sparkle in it, so it doesn't look too flat or powdered down. It actually um, replicates the actual natural finish of skin, which I love. What's the brand of that? This is the Giorgio Armani. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. Actually, just feel it on your skin. Like, I love that, that little fine shimmer in it. Yeah. It's, it's not overpowering, but it's so nice. It's so subtle. I love that. Beautiful. Okay, I'm going to start with a little blush on the apple of the cheek. This blush is Orgasm by NARS, which is, I think, every I makeup it. artist go to. Um, we don't want it to be, it's a, it's a very bronzy story. It's not really about color. I want it to be quite monochromatic. So I'm not going to apply a lot of this. I'm just going to touch it on the apple of the cheek just to give you like that natural blush effect. So I'm using this bronzer today, um, which doesn't have any shimmer in it. It's a matte bronzer. And I'm do, choosing to use a matte bronzer because I'm going to use it for a slight contour. I like a big fan brush for my contours because you can just dust it in a straight line underneath the cheekbone. I also like to dust across the temple, the top of the brow, and then again underneath this cheekbone. Taking it all the way out into the ear. Do a slight one underneath the jaw. So the way that I've done it is I've used the, the brush flat to create lines. And now just to give an overall bronze, I turn the brush on the other angle and use it flat the other way and just dust lightly over the entire face. And now for our final highlight, I'm going to use this colour called Albatross, which looks white, but actually has a very strong gold reflect. So when you're putting it on such bronze tanned skin, which Peter has come to us with today, which I love, <laughs> um, 
I like to put it across the cheekbone, even into the brow bone a little bit. Dust it across the chin, always down the peak of the nose, which most people would tend to like flatten out the T-section and powder it down, but I like to have a little shine over there because that's where people would naturally glow. And then obviously on the other cheekbone as well, into the brow bone. Never across this section of the brow because otherwise that looks sweaty and never down this section of the nose. Just more on the high points to lift it up and give it that extra glow when the light or the sun hits it. So now I'm using a flat translucent powder um, just in those areas that we want to remain not shining. So just here on the forehead, down the side of the nose here, oh, and just a little bit under the eye. This is a little highlight that not many people know or do about do. And I like to do it, it's just above the lip line. So Pia already has beautiful thick luscious lashes, so we won't be applying any false lashes today. And I'm even not going to be applying a huge amount of mascara, which is why I'm using a fan brush rather than using the mascara straight to the lashes. I'm just going to paint very, very lightly on the bottom lashes. What do you think? I love you. It's beautiful. It's so gorgeous. Natural glowing. I love the gold. Oh, it's perfect. Guess Thank so. you so much. Pleasure. I love it.